In this session we are going to cover the topic of throughput accounting. We are going to discuss and apply the theory of constraints, calculate and interpret the throughput accounting ratio and suggest how this ratio could be improved, and we will also apply throughput accounting to a multi-product decision-making problem. Throughput accounting assumes that the only totally variable cost is materials and that there is some element of fixed costs within labour and overheads and as such only material costs are considered within the throughput calculation. The throughput figure is therefore simply sales revenue minus material costs. So clearly in order to maximise throughput and therefore profit we want to maximise revenues and minimise conversion and material costs. Let's start by looking at the theory of constraints. This theory was formulated by Goldratt and Cox in 1986. The principle is that a business wants to turn materials into sales as soon as possible, to maximise the cash generated from those sales, and as a result an even production flow is required to achieve this. Clearly, if we want to maximise profitability, we want to ensure that we maximise our output of all profitable products, but sometimes this is not possible, as there is a scarce resource or other factor that limits our output levels. We call this the constraint or bottleneck. The sorts of issues that might cause a bottleneck would be availability of material, unreliable suppliers, labour or machines, or a poor salesperson resulting in sales volumes being limited. If there is a bottleneck reducing output within the production process, we want to make sure that we don't produce higher output levels before the bottleneck than the bottleneck can cope with as this will cause the levels of work in progress before the bottleneck to continually increase, hence the need for an even production flow. There are five main steps in the theory of constraints process. Step 1 is to identify the bottleneck or constraint. Step 2 is to decide the best means of exploiting the bottleneck. In other words, make sure that output is maximised at the bottleneck. Step 3 is to ensure that production up to the bottleneck is at the same rate as after the bottleneck, so that work in progress does not build up. Step 4 is to work out ways to elevate the bottleneck. This means working out ways of increasing the output at the bottleneck point, so that total output can increase. And step 5 is to return to step 1. Eventually, by removing one bottleneck, another is likely to appear. So at this stage we would need to go back to step 1 and repeat these five steps. Once we know what the constraint or bottleneck is, we can use limiting factor analysis to determine which product or products should be produced to maximise throughput. The calculations are performed in much the same way as for regular limiting factor analysis, but rather than ranking the products based on contribution per limiting factor, we will now rank them based on throughput per bottleneck resource. The product with the highest throughput per bottleneck resource should be produced first, followed by the product with the next best throughput per bottleneck resource, and so on until the bottleneck has been utilised in full. For more information on limiting factor analysis, please see the video covering this topic. As the throughput calculations are almost identical to regular limiting factor analysis, I will not be covering a numerical example on this video. The video on limiting factor analysis should provide enough detail, but there are also some numerical examples within an article on throughput accounting on the ACCA website that help support this video. The throughput accounting ratio can help us to determine whether a particular product covers operating costs and therefore makes a profit, or if it does not cover the operating costs and therefore makes a loss. We can then use this information to determine which product or products should be made given the bottleneck. There are two other ratios that need to be calculated before we can calculate the throughput accounting ratio, or TPAR. The first is the one we would use to rank products using a limiting factor analysis approach, and that is to take throughput per unit and divide through by the time taken in the bottleneck resource. This gives us the return per factory hour for a given product. The second ratio is based on the entire factory and is used to find the cost per factory hour. This is calculated as the total factory cost divided by the total time available on the bottleneck resource. 
The throughput accounting ratio is then calculated as return per factory hour divided by cost per factory hour. If the throughput accounting ratio is greater than 1, then throughput is greater than operating costs and a profit will be made. If the throughput accounting ratio is less than 1, then operating costs are higher than throughput and a loss is made. Clearly, where a loss is made, we would not want to make this product. Where more than one product has a throughput accounting ratio of greater than 1, then products would be ranked from the highest ratio to the lowest, and the production plan would be based on this ranking. Let's run through a quick example to demonstrate the throughput accounting ratio calculation. A business makes and sells a product that has a selling price of $8 per unit. The material cost per unit is $2.50. Monthly operating costs are $32,000. And there is a bottleneck in relation to machine hours. There are only 8,000 hours available each month. And it takes one hour to make each unit. Based on this data, we can calculate the throughput per unit to be $8 minus $2.50, giving us $5.50. The return per factory hour is therefore $5.50, divided by one hour, so $5.50 per hour. The cost per factory hour will be the monthly operating costs of $32,000 divided through by the total time available each month of 8,000 machine hours. So this will be a cost of $4 per hour. The throughput accounting ratio is therefore $5.50 divided by $4, giving us 1.375. As this is greater than 1, we will make a profit if we make this product. We could see this by simply looking at the respective return and cost per hour figures. The revenue is higher than the cost, so we must make a profit on this product. The ratio is important for ranking products in multi-product decision-making processes. Once we know the throughput accounting ratio for a product, we might want to think about how we can increase or improve the ratio for that product. We could do this by either increasing selling prices or reducing material costs to increase the throughput itself. This may of course result in a reduction in demand or using a lower quality material, which would then result in higher levels of wastage and a lower output. We could also look to improve productivity and thereby reduce the time spent making each unit, and as a result we could make more units in the time available. To finish off, please be aware that there are a number of criticisms of the throughput accounting ratio. It only considers the short term when operating expenses are mainly fixed. It concentrates too much on materials, excluding other costs that might impact on the profitability of the products being produced based on the ranking approach discussed. And it is more difficult to apply in the longer term when labour costs are classed as a variable cost.